Good morning. Good morning. Let's try this song out for size. Join me if you, you know this little one. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is Amen. Welcome to Sharon. I, I invite you to just turn to somebody you're next to and say, Welcome to celebrating our awesome God today. All right. All right. Now, settle down, everybody. We've got a lot to do. <laughs> we got to get to the heart of the matter, which is worshiping the Lord Jesus. We're grateful if you are visiting with us today and pray that you feel welcome in this place. Uh, Sharon Church is a vibrant family of God, and we're grateful anytime somebody comes in and sort of shares uh, the, the thing God is doing in their life with us. I invite you to fill out one of these connect cards that's in the bench in front of you if you'd like to reach out to us and let us know about who you are and what you here or how we can be praying for you. But that's available to you. I also let you know that in our bulletin or our worship guide, we have information that's not only important for how to follow along with today's service, but also in the back for this week. As always, uh, have time to go through all of these individuals, but we're going to highlight a few today. I invite you during the week to make sure you know where you're supposed to be showing up and that you're supposed to be showing up so you can just be out there witnessing uh, to your neighbors and your friends. But we, uh, we do have an omission from the bulletin and that is our ministry task force that Martin is leading. That is meeting tomorrow at 6.30. It was not in the bulletin. I also uh, omitted from the bulletin is something I sent an email about yesterday afternoon, and that has to do with a, a trip to New Bern with me next Saturday. It'll be an all-day event, but it is our first laity convocation for our annual conference that is accessible to all of you. Laity, for those of you who don't know, is everybody here except clergy. So I'm, I'm going as a clergy person, but I'd like to take a team with me. I know Brian and Joe are going to go with me, but if you'd like to take a trip to New Bern, take a look at your, your email you yesterday, and you can decide if you'd like to participate in that. But we're going to leave at 7.20 in the morning, not 7.19 or 7.21. We're going to leave at 7.20. <laughs> and of course, next week we'll have trunk or treat, and if you are interested in donating some candy or even signing up your own trunk display, it's always a great thing. The finance team meeting scheduled for Tuesday has been postponed until the next week. So we, we added a meeting and we took a meeting out. So we're even. We're even. But at this time, I'm going to read from our prayer list. Each week we have a prayer list for the book. And, and then there's a few names that have come in this morning. So let's turn our hearts toward prayer. Join us this week for Benny Ludlam, Winky Evans, Ann Kaysen, Dean and Pat Drawn, Bill Hughes, Ted Norton, Joan Robain, Larry Allen Evans, Michael Conley, Cindy Gibson, Christy Stokely, Linda Register, Connie Willard, Derek Debbie Norris, Steve Spear, 
Archie and Beverly, Victoria Edge, survivors of recent floods. Also, we live this morning, Harry Evans, Steve Evans, Gene Blake, Bill Inman, and Joe Steinbeck. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Awesome God, it's a privilege to be in your house today. We know that people all around the world are gathering in places to worship your name. They have lots of different names on the signs outside of their doors. Some of them don't even have signs. They're just a gathering of your faithful followers. We thank you for the opportunity to meet in this beautiful place on this gorgeous morning. We give you praise and we give you thanksgiving. Uh, we, we could never outgive you. You've blessed us so much. This morning we acknowledge that although you have paved the way for us and you have a place for us in glory, we're not there yet. Living in a world that's broken in many ways. There are people who are sick in need of prayer and we lift them to you, Lord, knowing that you are a healer and that there's nothing impossible for you. We lift up those who are experiencing war international war, terrorism, right on down to households in our neighborhood where husbands and wives are fighting on a daily basis. Lord, you are the Prince of Peace, and we pray for your people to come, for your shalom to reign in our neighborhood, in the world. It's too big for us, Lord, but nothing's too big for you. We pray for those who need a financial blessing, they would look to you, that they would understand that you are the owner of the cattle on a thousand hills. And speaking of hills, Lord, we lift up our neighbors in the mountains of North Carolina and into Georgia and Tennessee and in Florida. Mercies upon those folks who are still reeling, some without power, some without clean water, some without the ability to carry on with their lives and God, we know that you've raised up the body of Christ in this region, and it's a beautiful thing to watch the folks respond. So help us in the next days and weeks and months respond appropriately, because we know the need will be great. Thank you, Jehovah Jireh, for being our provider. <laughs> this morning as we worship, we're grateful for our salvation for your son, Jesus Christ, who left the comforts of heaven to join us. The word of God became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory. May your glory fall on us today, Lord, and may you be the object of our praise and our worship. Lord, it's not about us coming to be filled up today. It's about us coming together to lift up the name of Jesus Christ. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us today, Lord. Grant us the power and the encouragement to continue on in mission and in ministry in this place, and we'll give you all the praise and glory. And now, as your children, we give back to you the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please rise as you're able so we can sing praise to God this morning. We'll begin with, Come thy fount of every blessing.
the church say, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Praise God. Let us pray. Father God, Lord, we come to you this morning with grateful hearts and our voices lifted high in praise. Lord, let us remember this is the reason we're here, to praise and honor and glorify only you and not ourselves. Lord, let us get out of your way so that you can do the good work that you would have us to do. Thank you, God, for the praise team. Thank you, God, for our Pastor Jim. Thank you, God, for the message that you have laid on his heart to offer to each of us. Lord, give us ears to hear and eyes to see where you would have us to serve you in our community and in our world. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Please have a seat, everybody. I would invite the kids that are here to come on up and join me for a few minutes. I saw a few faces out there that I'm ready to visit with. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great to see you. We have a new friend here today. Is it Poppy? is here to meet with us, so time to make a new friend if you want. We got little ones coming. I heard a baby in here, too. This isn't even a baby anymore. She's been one already. But we're excited about our church family. You remember last week I gave you bookmarks that I told you were about how to pray every day for our Samaritan's Purse Operation Christmas Child, and they were the wrong bookmarks? You probably know, right? Well, I promised you I'd bring you the right one, so make sure when you get a lollipop today that you get one of these. And if you don't really know what to do with this, please give it to your parents or your grandparents or somebody that can help you pray. I promised Miss Lori that I would keep talking about these shoe boxes and the gifts that go in them. I know that most of you say, well, that's just one present. I'm used to getting two or three or 20 or 50 presents at Christmas time. And I, I just wanted to remind you that when we here in our church family fill one of these boxes and send it to some kid like you in some other country, it may be the first Christmas present they ever received. It might be the first present at all that they'd ever received. And so, Let's make sure we participate in this. It's a great opportunity. Now, later on, I'm going to be talking about something that Jesus taught to his disciples, people like us, and we have called it the golden rule for a long time. Have you ever heard of the golden rule? Yeah. What's the golden rule? Our King James people say, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And the 21st century people say, do the things to other people that you would want them to do to you. And I think that's a good way to go. So for example, this is how this works. If you want people to be kind to you, what should you do? Be kind to them, all right? Be kind to them. Perfect. If you want people gifts, what should you do? Give them a gift. All right? That's how it works. If you would like it, if somebody was nice to you and opened the door, if you had a handful of books, well, what might you do if you saw somebody with a, two hands full of books? Open the door for them. That's how it works. If <laughs> this is going to be a little hard. If you think. Their room. What should you do? Let them clean your room. It works both ways. <laughs> it works both ways. <laughs> it works. What Jesus is teaching that we can't just go around and wish other people would treat us well. 
because we live together with other people. And it's not all about us and what we want and how we want to be treated. It's about how we live together and how we show love, right? If we want to be loved, we have to love other people. If we want to be shown kindness, we need to show kindness to others. Our house, our houses will be happy. You want to help a happy house? Yeah. If you'd like somebody to smile at you, what what could you do? Smile. Smile at them. That's one of my favorite things to do because I love to have people smile. Just smiling. <laughs> yeah. See the smiles that came back. We did that. All right. I think you get. The If I say I know that might sound kind of crazy, kind of weird, but I do love <laughs> the Lord. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to be together with our church family. Jesus, we thank you for this, this golden rule, this teaching that we ought to treat other people the way that we would want to be treated. Help us to not wait for other people to be first in that. Help us to be the first ones to show love. Let us be the first ones to show compassion. Let us be the first ones to share joy and a smile. That way we'll, we'll grow like Jesus. Bless these kids. Help them to grow in love and kindness and mercy and happiness in our church family. May that spread with them to school, into their homes, and everywhere else they go. We pray this in Jesus' name. If you want Pastor Jim to help you stand up after he's sitting down, you can come up here and help Pastor Jim stand up. I think I can do it. I think I can do it. All right. Praise God for that. At this time, I invite our ushers to come forward as we prepare to give and receive our tithes and offerings.
Father God, with joy in our hearts, we dedicate these tithes and offerings to the furthering of your kingdom and the work you've called us to at Sharon Church. Amen. Now let's join together in saying what we believe in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, ascended at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From then he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting.
Old Testament lesson today comes from Isaiah chapter 55, verses 6 and 7. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon Word of God for the people of God. Amen. What a great picture of repentance, that Old Testament reading. What a beautiful reminder. In the times that we're living in, that if we seek the Lord, we're going to find the Lord. We're going to find out that He's been there the whole time. And that's what repentance is about. And it's a really good idea to do that because when we do that, we find love, we find life, we find purpose, we find joy, and we find community. I'm grateful for the Old Testament reminder. Today we'll be thinking about some New Testament reminders. This is the seventh message, actually the eighth message in a series we've been uh, going through for the last two months. It is a, a study of the Sermon on the Mount found in Matthew chapters 5, 6, and 7. It is a master class in what it means to be a follower of Jesus. It's really uh, hard-hitting. Jesus makes some very subtle but very powerful reminders to us in there that help us to understand that in this world, followers of Jesus are different than other people. We have different values. We have different worldviews. We have different priorities. We have different things that light us up, and I think we need to remember that. Sometimes churches get so focused on trying to be welcoming to the people in the community that we lose our identity, and I want us to remember who we are. I want us to remember whose we are. So I invite you uh, to go further with me into this. I guess the uh, before I read, I will just remind us all that no matter what kind of earthly father any of us have had, when we come to faith in Christ, when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, we have the best father there ever was, that there is now and ever will be. We have a good father, the best father. There's nothing that can ever take that away from us. And so I pray that as we talk about this today, no matter what our background is or what our experience we have with fathers, this is pointing us to the good father who will never leave us, never forsake us, never let us down, and never push us away. Amen? That's good, isn't it? That's good. And he's, he's always around. <laughs> he's always around. He's a good father. He's a loving father. He wants what's best for his children. Amen. That's, that's a hallelujah. That's a hallelujah. He wants what's best for his children. And we are his children by faith. I love that. I invite you to follow with me in Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 through 12. This is our gospel reading this morning. Jesus says, ask, and it will be given you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds, and for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if a child asks for a fish, we'll give a snake. If then you, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will 
Dear Father in heaven, give good things to those who ask him. In everything, do to others as you would have them do to you. For this is the law and the prophets. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word today and to our understanding. Father, I pray that your spirit would allow me to deliver a message that would be useful to this congregation, that would glorify you and that would bind us together in the love of God. Amen. We need to be reminded of who we are. We need to be reminded that we're not just like everybody else. I think it's important for us. We need to continually tell our kids we are different. We are different. And we need to tell our adult kids that. And we need to maybe remind our parents sometimes we're called to a different life. We are, but it's a good life. It's the good family. It's the love of Shaq, if you will. <laughs> in verses 7 and 8 in our gospel passage, it contains what uh, Bible students call a triplet of imperatives by Jesus. That just means three things that Jesus wants his disciples to do. It's imperative that we do these things. And all three of them are in the case, the tense, that says, whatever this is, keep doing it. So when it says ask, it's really saying keep on asking. If it says seek, it really means keep on seeking. And if it says knock, keep on knocking. I think that's important. Sometimes we think we can just do something quickly and everything's going to just work out. And we forget that we're in this thing for the long haul, aren't we? We are in this thing for the long haul. And God is going to use our obedience to his glory and for our benefit and the benefit of our friends and our family members. It's good. It's not a formula for prayer. I think some of you might be surprised because you may have read a whole book about ask, seek, and knock. You can find that out there. It's not terrible teaching, but really what this is, all three of these are taken together. It's not first you should ask and, and then, because God's not going to give you what you want, then you have to go find God and he's still not going to give what you want. Then you have to go to his house and bang on his door, and then he'll give. It's not that. It really is not that. God doesn't make it that hard. God doesn't make it that hard. Religion wants to make things hard. Relationship makes things natural and good, right? Natural and good. So let's just look at ask first. God knows what we need. Do we understand that? God knows what we need. It, God is quite involved in watching us. God designed us. God has purpose for us. God knows if we're on course. And God knows if we're off course. And he knows what we need, whether we're on course or off course, to give us the life that was designed for us from the beginning of time. The beginning of time. But because God is a father, all the fathers out here, and even all the mothers, or even the children, if you're a parent, don't you love it when your kids come and ask you? Not for obnoxious stuff, like I want a mini bike, but ask you, Dad, can I, can I go out into the shop with you and work with you? Mom, can I bake cookies with you? Our Father loves to have his children ask. And he already knows what we want. And he really definitely knows what we need. This is God's heart when we come to him and ask. There's a caveat. Caveat is a fancy word for warning. We do, do not want to approach God like one of those 
cosmic vending machines because we heard Jesus say, ask God for anything and you're going to get it. It does seem like that's what it says, doesn't it? But it's not quite that simple. God's not going to be available to us for every old thing that we want in a selfish way. God, I want a new car. God, I want to make more money. God, I want my kids to behave right now. God, do this for me. It's not like that. The, the Sermon on the Mount is all about a holistic lifestyle of coming together in God's will, understanding what God is calling us to, and then aligning that. If we are not getting what we ask, there's a chance we're asking for things that God knows are not what we need and maybe even harmful to us or not good for us. I can ask God for a thousand Snickers bars and because he's a good God, maybe I'm only going to get one Snickers bar and maybe a second that I'll eat five seconds after I finish the first one. God knows what we need, and God knows what we would do when we get things we don't really know how to handle. I remember I got my first skateboard. I wanted it really bad, and I hounded my parents, and I got it for my birthday, and I took it outside on the sidewalk, and I took one kick, and I landed on the cement with the back of my head, and my dad said, that's what you wanted. <laughs> he was a good father, too. God is a person. That's another part of the asking. We're not going before the universe. Do you hear this stuff? I'm asking the universe to manifest for me a better marriage. I'm asking for the universe to manifest for me an extra thousand dollars out of nowhere. And it's not what this is about. The universe was created by God. So let's skip the universe part and go straight to the creator, the father who loves us, the parent who's perfect. I think that's just really important. The more we, as the children of God, grow up and mature in our faith, the more our asking reflects the heart of God for us. Does that make sense? As we are sanctified, as we come, become more like Jesus, we don't ask for selfish things. The things that we ask for have to do with the longing in our heart to be closer to God. God, I want to be with you. Will you take me with you? I love all of that. We're wanting to conform to God's perfect will for our lives, and our asking over time will more and more reflect that. Okay, let's move on. We've done asking, now seek. Keep on seeking. Here's the message. We all know this, and I have to be reminded of this all the time. If God seems distant, search for God. If God seems distant, search for God. Earlier in chapter 5, in what we call the Beatitudes, Jesus says, blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are the ones who know that they're far from God, that they're not really in God's will. Blessed are the ones who are seeking God. So as we seek God, we will find God. In the Old Testament, the prophet Jeremiah said, you will seek me and find me. There's a difference between seeking and finding. When you seek me and find me, you will have been seeking me with what? Your whole heart. I think that Old Testament prophetic statement applies to what Jesus is teaching here. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with your whole heart. Your whole heart. Not seeking while you're scrolling through Instagram. 
with your whole heart. Wow. About this, God does not play hide and seek. If we're seeking the Lord, the Lord's going to be found. If we can't find God, it's because we're lost, not because God is lost. Right? It's, it's that. How about Adam and Eve? They were with God in the garden. And he gave them everything, and they had a close relationship from what we can tell. When they sinned, when they fell to temptation and brought a curse on themselves, what did they do? What did they do? They made some little clothes and they hid from God. When God found them, he said, what are you guys doing? And they said, well, <laughs> you know what we did and we're ashamed and we're scared of you, so we're hiding. And they should have been. We should have a little bit of that in us, too, when we are disobedient. God doesn't play games with us. The last of the three, we have ask, seek, and now we have knock. It's okay. You know where to find your Heavenly Father. Don't be shy. Go ahead. Knock. It's not like uh, that Wizard of Oz movie, right, where they're going, they need help. They need help. And they're going to ask the great Wizard of Oz, of course, this is a fictional story, it's not scripture, for a brain and for courage and for whatever else, probably a memory. <laughs> and they... They get ushered into the presence of Oz and there's smoke and there's fire and there's all this awful stuff and they project this huge green ugly... Again, I'm getting frightened just thinking about it. And they're trembling before the wizard and he... Who dares come here to speak to the green? Oh, yeah, right? I tried to say that in a nicer way. That's not an image of us approaching our God, our good father. Picture more like my dad, who was a good father, sitting in his recliner chair, maybe or maybe not, with a pipe in his mouth, reading the newspaper, and Jimmy coming up to him and saying, Dad, you know what he did? He took the pipe out of his mouth, he closed the newspaper, and he said, What do you want? That's what a good father is like. And then when we do that in prayer, that's what the father is like. We don't have to compete with anybody else for God's attention. Did you know that? There's, there's a big enough God that there's enough of God for everybody. For everybody. He cares about all of us. No matter who we are, where we've been, where we come from, what language we speak, God is a good father. He's not looking through a peephole when we knock, rolling his eyes like, oh, no, <laughs> not that one again. Right? Have you ever done that kind of thing? Like, turn off the lights. Let's pretend we're not here. We're going to have trick-or-treaters at some of our houses. Have you ever pulled the old turn out the light and hide from your neighbor's kids? So that when they knock on the door, you're not there, even though you're actually secretly there. That is not how we should view our Lord. The Lord is standing at the door, right? That's what Jesus says at the end of the Bible. I'm standing at the door. In fact, I'm knocking. I'm going to open the door every time for you. I will open the door every time for you. Isn't that a good... A good thing to hear, every time I'm going to open the door for you. Other people might slam a door in your face. I'm not going to. God doesn't hide. He wants to be with us. He wants to give us good things. That's what Jesus said. And he knows how to give us good things. It says, so if you ask for bread... 
the good father is not going to give you a stone. Speaking of silly stuff from our childhood, think about the Charlie Brown Peanuts Halloween show and the kids are out trick-or-treating and they're knocking on doors and all the other kids go up there and get candy and old Charlie Brown gets up there with his bag and what happens? He gets expecting candy. He gets a rock. I got a rock. Everybody else is getting those good things. Poor Charlie Brown gets a rock. Do you ever feel like Charlie Brown in your prayer life? You see everybody else seemingly getting blessed, and yet it seems like you're getting rocks. If you ask for fish, which was a staple in their diet along with bread, your father's not going to give you a scorpion or a snake. I was listening to somebody preaching about this Uh, This week, and he said, if you ask for a fish sandwich, God's not going to give you a snake taco. (laughs) What a funny image. (laughs) What a funny and gross image that is. He's not that kind of father. We have to be reminded of that. He's not that kind of father. He's a good father. Now, in our scripture reading this morning, not directly related to the asking, seeking, and knocking, Jesus goes on to say, do to others as you would have them do to you. I know we've all grown up with a golden rule and we get it. I just want to make sure we all understand that this is not a passive So many philosophies in the world, so many historic religions have a teaching that's a lot like it that says, don't do to others what you would have them not do to you, which is pretty good. However, that allows for us to be off the hook about doing the good things that we're supposed to be doing. Do you see the difference? Don't do gives you an opportunity to just sit around and wait for other people to do the good things. Do is an imperative. Do is do. It's proactive. Do to others as you would have them do to you. So many of you in your volunteer activities, in your just how you act in your neighborhood, you live this out, and I'm so proud to be part of this church family because you understand do instead of sit back. Do is leaning forward. Don't do is leaning backwards. And I think the Lord is calling us to a leaning forward, especially in these times. Especially in these times. Oh boy, I hope somebody goes out west and helps those people. That doesn't, that's not it. Remember a couple weeks ago we were leaning in. We need to continue listening to God about how we can still lean forward to helping our neighbors, helping people that are really in need. These neighbors right around here and the neighbors out there in the world. Just imagine a world. How about just imagine your household or this church family, if everybody did it. Everybody did to others as they desired them to do to them. What would that be like? It's so far-fetched, right? But it's what we're called to. You know what I think that would be like if everybody did it? I think it would be like heaven on earth. I really believe it would be like heaven on earth. Y'all would be giving me Snickers all the time. And I'm, I'm, not really, I'm not really trying to get a pile of Snickers on my desk, because the last time I said something like that, that's what happened. A little pile will be okay. <laughs> Whatever's left over from Halloween. All right. I don't know about you but I have needed this master class from the Lord Jesus, our master. I have needed this time to get grounded in 
what the Lord thinks about things. I've needed this reminder to teach me about how called apart we are as disciples of Jesus Christ. This is solid ground to stand on, isn't it? It's solid ground. Love your neighbor. Love your enemy. Seek the Lord while he could still be found. Walk humbly with God. Not only is this good foundation for us to stand on, good solid ground, but it's good news for us to share with people who have not discovered this yet for whatever reason. Pray for the Holy Spirit to give you opportunities to share this solid ground. And if you don't know how to talk about it, just take them to Matthew in your Bible and read together with them chapters 5, 6, and 7. It might take you a few appointments. What else better do you have to do? Really? What else better do you have to do? Obviously, go to work if you work. Obviously, take care of your children. <laughs> but what better do you have to do? I praise God for this. Lord, we are grateful for the Sermon on the Mount, a master class in what it means to be your disciples. I pray your anointing on this congregation that we would live out the call. I thank you for the many examples of people who are getting it right most of the time and for the grace you show us when we fail. Lord, I pray that over time we would encourage each other to the point where we fail less and succeed more often. You are worth our best efforts. We love you so much, God. Thank you for the opportunity that we have to be here worshiping. And now as we sing and depart, send us in your mission into this world, making disciples who worship passionately, love extravagantly, and witness boldly. Amen. Let us rise and join in singing our last song found on page 454 of our pew hymnal, Open My Eyes That I May See. Let us sing. Open my eyes that I may see Glimpses of truth thou hast for me Place in my hands a wonderful key That shall unclasp and set me free Silently now I wait for thee Ready my God thy will to see Open my eyes, illumine me, Spirit divine. Open my ears that I may hear voices of truth thou sendest clear. And while the waves nose fall on my ear, everything false will disappear. Silently now I wait for thee, ready my God thy will to see. Open my eyes, illumine me, Spirit divine. Open my mouth and let me bear, gladly the warm truth in my heart and let me prepare love with thy children thus to share silently now i wait for thee ready my god thy will to see open my heart illumine me Fellas, let me get out of your way.
I'm going to have a moment of connectional privilege and invite my friend, Paul Cecil, to come. He is one of the presiding elders in our conference. Come on up. I'm just going to ask you to give us a benediction, if you would. We don't know each other real well, but through annual conferences over the years, we have become friends in a special way. And so I invite you to just give us a, a benediction, if you would, brother. Right. He's here vacationing. <laughs> His wife. I think it's your wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah sorry. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, what we, let us believe that what we have said with our mouths, we believe it in our hearts. And what we believe in our hearts, we practice in our lives each and every day. Father, let us love extravagantly, worship passionately, and witness boldly to share the good news that Jesus Christ has come mm. and that he's coming again. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. Peace be with you all.